Hello. So this is take two of this video because I ingeniously recorded the first one with the microphone turned off. But that's good because it sucked anyway. So this tutorial series is intended for uh, learning how to use the new features in Virto Studio 2.0. And uh, those new features, uh, among the most important ones, are how to use the built-in shaders to uh, produce some of the effects you might have seen me pull off in uh, the tutorials, videos, or not tutorial, but uh, intro videos and screenshots and stuff like that you've seen me post of the app. So this video series is kind of to get you started on how to pull off those techniques. Um, I'm going to produce uh, a number of these, hopefully, and, and have the series grow pretty large. However, I'm currently in the middle uh, right now of working pretty hard on getting the Mac version of Roto Studio up to version 2 as well. So um, it'll pick up pace more uh, when 2.0 is done for Mac. So I'm going to create a scene here um, of the iPad uh, with the iPad app, just of a, of a standard plane. and. Um, Using that plane, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and leave that there, and I'm going to add a sphere. Um, so this uses the default shader that every surface is defaultly created with, and um, that shader is dependent upon whether you're on an iPad 2 or, or, or newer. On an iPad Air, it is uh, the Fong shader, which is pixel-perfect, nice lighting, and on an iPad 2 and lower, it'll be the uglier uh, garage shader. Um, so what you do is you tap the material button up top, which is the sphere button, and then you go to the material groups and you hit uh, the, the name of the material group, and then there's a little I button next to shader, and that brings up the, the shader dialog. Inside of the shader properties, you're able to pick um, uh, the shader you want to use built from the built-in list of shaders. The default one depends on the device, like I said before. Fung is pixel-perfect lighting, which looks nice. Garad kind of looks crappier, but it's faster. It's the default on older iPads. On older iPads, though, you can change this and override it and set it to Fung, so it'll look nice regardless of the device you're running it on, um, which is pretty sweet. And then uh, there's all the other ones I have in this list. Like I said, this video is mainly going to focus on bump mapping. So I'm going to go ahead and move this sphere out of the way, and uh, I'm gonna, we're going to mess with the plane first. Um, so essentially, uh, the way bump mapping works is uh, you start out with a, a regularly, I guess you could say non-complex uh, surface geometry, which might only be like one quadrilateral polygon. And what you can do is you can place a bump map on that surface to simulate a more complex surface underneath. And what it does is it allows you to simulate digitized normals which affect the lighting calculations which basically make the model look more um, complex to, you know, uh, with the lighting effects. Um, it sounds really complicated, but it, it, in reality it's just a really neat way of making um, 3D surfaces look much more interesting with, with lighting effects or applying digital bumps uh, to, to, to the light um, when it's applied or to the surface when it's, when it's being lit. Um, I should also mention, well, hold on. So you can go to uh, Safari and you can search for bump maps. There are special kinds of texture maps. They can't just be any old, any old kind. So if you just search for normal maps um, using your web browser and go to Google Image Search, um, you can find a number of awesome sample bump maps that you can just directly bring into your scene. So if you actually go into the image and you tap, long tap and hold with your finger and select copy, you copy the image to the clipboard, you can then go back to Virto Studio and you could actually just tap anywhere and then hit paste on the clipboard and you've now pasted that image. And this works with any kind of texture. You've pasted it directly into your texture library, which is pretty a pretty sweet way of getting textures in. So now that I've done that, I can go directly um, now this is what happens if you apply this texture as a regular texture, it's not going to look right, so that's not the way you do it. You actually go to the shader, like I mentioned before, and then you go and you change it to bump mapping, and then you use the built-in shader inputs that pop up, and those are different depending on what shader you've selected. Certain shaders have different inputs and so forth. But if you select bump texture under here, and then you pick the, the associated bump map, it will then use that um, to perform the bump mapping, and as you can see, it looks um, 
much more interesting in the sense that the lighting is now being affected by, by the bump map that you've set. And if you turn on the shininess highlight um, for this surface, you'll actually see that the um, texture will look um, different depending on how the light strikes it. So it really makes the, the bump mapping effect look awesomely realistic uh, when you use uh, a shininess or specular uh, material properties alongside of it. Um, and you can see it's just still the same single polygon, but the bump map makes the surface look that much more complex, which is awesome. And you can apply a normal diffuse texture map on top like I just did here, and you can even tweak the color properties, and none of that affects the bump mapping because the bump mapping is, is, is done uh, by the shader using that, that other texture map assignment. Uh, I'm going to cover more in, an, in a later video about how those shader inputs work and how they're different for each shader. But I just wanted to get you guys quickly started to show you how bump mapping works. I should also mention this video, the way I'm panning around is I'm actually using two fingers to pan the screen. Um, so what I've done here is I've just split the surface uh, using subdivisions to, to kind of simulate how bump mapping works on a more complex surface. And what I'm doing is just selecting a couple of those uh, subdivided quads. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, move those up a little bit just to kind of create a slightly more interesting surface and you can see how um, the bump map is uh, affected which is really neat it just covers over the surface really nicely and and, and still works out so um, that's just kind of giving you an example of that uh, one thing I didn't mention which is you don't have to understand this too much but it's, it's kind of more an advanced uh, concept um, bump mapping requires a special um, type of vertex data called uh, tangent vectors, which are like normals, but they're tangent to the surface. And uh, when you pick a bump map surface, tangents are automatically turned on for you in edit mode. And uh, in just a second here, I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to pop into edit mode and turn on uh, show normals, which in this case also shows the tangents. And what it'll do is at every single point in the surface, it shows you um, the surface local coordinate system created by the normal, the tangent, and then the, uh, the binormal, which is uh, the perpendicular of those two. And this is the information that bump mapping needs to work properly, and Virto Studio allows you to generate it. Like I say, if you pick a shader that needs them, uh, the system automatically turns on and generates these for you. Because they're slower than, you know, regular normal uh, computations, you, you are able to turn them back on or off as you please by just tapping a turning on and off that generate tangent switch, but uh, normal mapping needs them, or bump mapping needs them, so you, sh you should leave those on. Um, so um, that's basically it. That's how you do bump mapping in Virto Studio, just a couple taps, copying and pasting in your normal map, or just bringing in any normal map you've generated, and, uh, and you got bump mapping. Uh, just for good measure, I'm going to apply it to the sphere there, so you can see what it looks like on a sphere, but, but you can really apply it to a uh, to any surface um, that you want, and you'll have a very neat, bumpy looking surfaces. So uh, that's the tutorial video. More to come soon. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, take care.